Then I have an Article 2 where I have the right to do whatever I want as president, but I don't even talk about that. Uh, I've got a pen and I've got a phone. Uh, and I can use that pen to sign executive orders uh, and take executive actions and administrative actions that move the ball forward. And that is on day one, we take out our executive order pen and we rescind every damn thing on this issue that Trump has done. Is this the way our government is supposed to function? According to the Constitution, all three branches are supposed to check and balance each other. But over the past few years, the executive branch in particular has time and time again overstepped its bounds. Executive overreach is a runaway train and it threatens the balance of our government. We don't do significant political change through rule of law anymore. We do it through executive orders and actions and rule and, rule and, uh, and regulations. So that may seem like an academic point, but it's not just an academic point. And the worst part is that 2020 candidates are looking to concentrate even more power in the executive branch, more specifically, the presidency. But let's back it up. What are the limits on executive power supposed to look like, and why should we care if they're broken? Unlike for legislative power, where you have an enumeration of various powers that Congress gets, the Article 2 only says, the executive power is vested in the President of the United States. Uh, and so uh, it's a lot more nebulous what the scope of those powers are, but basically it's supposed to be enforcing the law that Congress passes rather than making the law uh, himself. The laws surrounding presidential power are complex, but the last bit of Shapiro's answer is the core principle of executive power. Enforcing the law that Congress passes rather than making the law uh, himself. They did not want a king, and some of the arguments of the impeachment of Trump right now are, are those arguments that he's acting like a king. Some of the arguments against Obama was he was acting like a king. So those are the limits of executive power, but what does it look like when the president oversteps those boundaries? Constitutional scholars would argue that the past two presidents have given us plenty of examples of executive overreach. At the conclusion of the Obama presidency, Dr. Shapiro compiled a list of the top 10 ways he thought President Obama violated the Constitution while in office. He included the implementation of actions of Obamacare, profiling by the IRS, and the Chrysler bailout. President Obama used funds from TARP, the Troubled Asset Relief Program, to bail out Chrysler. Congress didn't approve it. It didn't disapprove it either. And he did that. It happened to be successful, but it, it took a lot of power away from Congress. It turns out that President Obama's financial switcheroo isn't an anomaly. A very similar diversion of funds occurred under President Trump. President Trump reprogrammed funds from the Defense Department to use for his wall. Uh, Trump may not spend money for his wall or other activities unless it's been uh, authorized and appropriated by, by Congress. No matter who is elected next term, the rhetoric of the 2020 candidates indicates that executive overreach has become normalized. Not a single one has objected to the expansion of executive power. This is what I would do. Day one, executive order, restore the legal status of 1.8 million young people in the DACA program. On day one, I'm going to attack the prices on commonly used drugs like EpiPens and insulin. On day one, they need to present something to Congress and have them consider it and vote and debate on that, and that's very hard when you've got divided party government. We find plenty of executive action in the candidates' plans. Senator Elizabeth Warren wants to expand background checks and end fossil fuel drilling. Senator Cory Booker's immigration plan relies on executive orders. And former Vice President Joe Biden's climate plan calls for a series of sweeping executive actions. Hold on, hold on, but these issues are important. We need to be taking action now. Sure, these issues may be important to you, but it's even more important to make sure we're keeping the president in check. Congress should be the one taking those But Congress isn't acting. I mean, at least the president is the one who's doing things. But what actions? Would you want the president to take actions you don't like? So how do we stop this runaway train? 
Well, Stephen Vladek, a professor at the University of Texas, says that Congress first needs to reassert itself as the main lawmaking power of the government and put the executive branch back in its place. I don't think there's any question that whoever is president in 2021, whether it's Donald Trump or one of the Democratic nominees, they're going to assert executive power. I think the real question is, what is the Congress going to do to try to rein those assertions in? Ultimately, this responsibility falls on the president. After all, the official in the best position to reign in executive power is whomever is sitting in the Oval Office. Everybody wants action, but nobody wants a dictator. By reigning in executive power, we can ensure that the control wielded in Washington remains balanced among the three branches of government. And so I ask the 2020 candidates, how will you put a halt to the runaway train of executive overreach.